So our next speaker is Owen Benlamy from the Committee on Climate Change. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming this morning. So as Sarah said, my name's uh, Owen Bellamy, and I'm from the Committee on Climate Change. And I'm going to talk to you this morning about what kind of some of the technologies are for reducing emissions from air travel. Um, and I think you've probably heard a bit already so far that um, air travel is one of the areas where it's a bit more difficult to reduce emissions. So I thought I'd start um, with a few points on, on why that's the case. Um, so if you think about it, actually jumbo jets, which is the kind of planes that most people go on holiday on, are actually really big. And I guess the first key point is that it uses a lot of energy to get a jumbo jet uh, off the ground. And so far, no one has really invented something which is as good as normal kind of fossil fuels for giving that power to get planes off the ground. So that's really one of the kind of big challenges for uh, kind of designing new airplanes. Um, the other kind of key issue is the timings and the time frames. So uh, a really big issue with air travel and airplanes is safety standards. So it takes a long time to kind of design new types of planes, which are quite complicated, in a way which passes all the safety tests um, in a kind of short period of time. So it, it, those kind of timings take a long time to develop the technologies. <coughs> and I guess another important point on the timings is that planes last a long time. So um, if you think a typical plane lasts maybe 20 to 30 years, um, but actually we're only talking about 30 years to get to net zero in 2050. So the scope for designing new planes, kind of getting them to pass the safety standards and then be available to airlines to buy, all in 30 years is actually quite a challenge. So that is <coughs> one of the other kind of big issues for why it's hard to reduce emissions from air travel. Uh, and the last point I just wanted to make is actually there's only a few companies that develop uh, new airplanes. So there's a couple of companies that make engines. We have one in the UK. And there are a couple of companies that make airplanes. Um, but those are all big global international companies. So that makes it more difficult in the UK for us to kind of develop new planes ourselves. We couldn't, as the UK, say to a UK company, please make us a zero carbon plane because there isn't actually a company in the UK that does that. Um, so before looking to what the options for the future are, I thought it was worth looking backwards a bit actually um, and what's happened in the past. So although you'd probably, if I put up a picture of a jumbo jet from 1950, which was when jet planes started, you would almost certainly recognize it. They look very similar today to what they did in the 50s, but actually, that hides that there's been a lot of advances in the engines and the aircraft designs. So planes are now a lot more <coughs> fuel efficient. They use a lot less fuel than they did when jet planes first came out in the 1950s. And actually, they use about 75% less fuel. So there has been this kind of gradual yearly kind of uh, progress by tweaking the engines and tweaking the aerodynamics to make the planes use less fuel. Um, but eventually we'll, we will kind of run out of those small annual changes to make. So we all need to do something else to kind of get us on track to net zero. Um, so I'm going to talk about what a few of those different uh, things are that you could do. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what some of the new engine types you could put on airplanes are. What some of the kind of different airplane designs are. And also um, what some of the different fuels are as well. Um, so firstly, well, what types of new engines could you put on airplanes um, to reduce the fuel use and to reduce the emissions? Um, so some manufacturers are developing uh, a new type of jet engine, uh, and that could come in perhaps in another 10 years or so, and that could actually save uh, a fair chunk of emissions. So it could save maybe a third of fuel and a third of emissions. Um, but obviously that's not anywhere near 100%, which is what we need to get to zero. Um, an option which could be actually zero emission for planes is using electricity, so electric planes, in the same way that electric vehicles are uh, zero emission. And the picture there is an Airbus uh, electric plane that has um, been available um, a few years ago to, to, to kind of buy. And that's a one-seater electric plane there, as you can see. 
Uh, I think that's really the big challenge with electric planes. Um, you can make a very small electric plane like that, in the same way that you can make an electric car, but actually making a jumbo jet with batteries and electric is really, really difficult because you would need so many batteries. Um, so I think people think it could be possible to make electric planes, but only kind of quite small ones, which you could only use on, on the very short routes. And as Jim said in his slides just before me, actually almost all the emissions, as you saw, 96% come from the, the long haul flights. So that is really why making electric planes for, for kind of uh, international flying is, is probably not likely to be um, a potential answer. Um, you could actually uh, change some of the aircraft designs as well to um, make the airplanes more fuel efficient. Um, so you can use new materials. So some planes, probably some planes you've already flown on, uh, use some new lighter weight materials. Again, you can't save a lot with that. You can potentially redesign airplanes to make them more um, aerodynamic and more fuel efficient. So I put a few kind of concepts on there that people are working on um, to make the planes quite a lot more um, aerodynamically efficient uh, and make them fly through the air easier. Um, but they have a quite a big challenge, as you can see. They look a bit different and actually you would have to change the way that airports are kind of laid out and configured to be able to fit planes which could a bit, uh, look a bit similar to that in those airports. So that's actually quite uh, a big challenge. Um, and then the last area I wanted to touch on was the, the different fuels as well. Um, so you've probably heard a bit about the biofuels and about the synthetic fuels, which I think Jenny talked about yesterday. Um, so on the biofuel side, uh, these have actually passed the kind of safety certification standards and tests that I mentioned at the beginning. And if you wanted to, you could fly a plane with half the fuel um, being biofuels. Um, but actually, at the moment, it's a very small market. So some uh, biofuel suppliers do supply biofuels for, for planes, but it's only about 0.1% of um, all fuel for aviation across the whole world. So it's a very small kind of new developing market. Uh, and as I think Jenny said yesterday, um, the inputs are used to make those biofuels, so the, the, the uh, trees and the biomass, um, you can actually use in different areas where you could potentially get bigger savings than using them uh, in planes. So it's not necessarily um, clear that using biofuels in aviation is really the best way to use that stuff. Um, you could get much bigger emission savings um, by using it in some other different ways, not in aviation or air travel. Um, and just lastly, on the um, synthetic fuel side, so it is technically possible um, to make these syn synthetic fuels, um, which are carbon neutral. Um, and you have to do that by combining hydrogen with uh, CO2, so with carbon dioxide. Um, but there are a few drawbacks to that, which is why not many people are thinking about them. Uh, and the first one is that they're going to be really expensive to make, possibly the most expensive thing you could do across anything you're going to be talking about over the, these kind of few weekends, not just in airplanes. Um, and also you could get the same emission savings, therefore, um, by using uh, the hydrogen and the carbon that you need to make them in different ways at a much lower cost. So that is really the big drawback with those different fuels. And I just wanted to end on a slide <coughs> that kind of leads nicely on from that one, which was just to talk a bit about what the cost of some of these different technologies might be for um, reducing emissions from air travel. And um, when I talked about the new engines and the new airplane designs, actually, they save so much fuel, and the fuel is quite expensive, that actually, um, it's not really thought that those would actually add much more um, extra cost onto flying, onto plane designs. Um, or they could even save money overall, actually. Um, the biofuels are a bit more expensive, so they're probably more expensive than normal fuels. So that would require some government kind of support from the government to, to bring them through. Uh, and as I mentioned, 
these kind of synthetic fuels, which are the, um, need a lot of those different um, things to make them, so the hydrogen and the carbon, they're actually going to be probably, we think, you know, really very expensive. And as I said, possibly one of the most expensive things you could do across not just um, air travel, but and not just transport, but every, every single area we've talked about um, this weekend. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you.